After you have your design all laid out, um, you're gonna need your, your wire. Um, and you're not gonna be tying knots this time with it, okay? So you wanna give yourself plenty of room um, on both sides still. Not as much as you did before, but if you take your design all the way up to 12, you know, I would give yourself, I would add three inches probably on both sides just to make sure that you have enough, okay, uh, on everything. So I'm gonna uh, forget the, the, the demonstration here. I'm gonna kind of talk about um, how, to, how to start stringing stuff. Thank you. Okay, in this demonstration, I'm gonna go over how to start stringing your project. Um, please understand that everybody's project can be a little different, um, but so this is kind of a generic demonstration um, for this. Um, so on this one, I'm just gonna do something super basic. I'm not even gonna string the whole thing because um, I don't need to to get the point across. Um, so remember, I wanna add three inches on this side, three inches on this side. So while I'm stopping at 12, I wanna go up to 15. Um, so I have my beetle on wire. Remember, we're not using um, the fishing line this time. I can um, do this two ways. I can just kind of line this up um, right up here. Um, the other thing I could have done, which would have been probably easier, although I would have had to go and get it, would have been um, to get a yardstick. Because 15 plus 15 is 30. You just need 30 inches. Okay, just using a regular pair of scissors to cut this off. Make sure that this end here um, is secure. Um, a lot of times these come with like a plastic thing on there. This one has, has a, a fabric one that you just kind of stick that along the side here and this doesn't go all over the place, okay. Now, when you string this, you do this differently this time. You do not um, start up here and work your way down. Um, and that's mainly if you have ones that, are, that have crimps. You actually want to start in the middle. Okay, so I've already bumped this once. <clears throat> so I'm going to take this and um, I'm actually going to use, just so I can get used to it, I'm probably going to throw a crimp here because we have all this extra. So I'm going to zoom in. My crimp is sitting right there. And I can use a pair of pliers to so my toolbox and I can crimp this nice and tight. And now that's not coming off. So this is like my tape. I'm gonna cut this off later. Okay, now that I have this all set up, I'm gonna start stringing from the middle out. Now, the holes that are in these beads are actually pretty large. Um, and then after testing it, I noticed that these crimp beads actually go into that hole. So a lot of times when you, when you run into a problem like that, you actually grab some seed beads. And you don't have to do this if that inside diameter of that hole isn't, isn't, so, um, isn't so big. So I would definitely grab you know, seed beads that, that match, you know, and just not, not random ones. But let me kind of do this um, demonstration now. So I'm gonna take this crimp bead and drop it, pick it back up again. So I have that crimp bead on there right now. Now I'm gonna put my seed bead on. And my next one. And the seed bead is too big to slide in there, so we're good. So one, two, three, four, five. Now, because I want to use this bead and not get a different one, I do have to grab another seed bead. Stick that in there and then put this other crimp bead. Okay, now the reason why we start in the middle, and so I'm gonna grab these ends, you know, loosely line them up. I understand I'm gonna be cutting this off a little bit later anyways, is I wanna get this as much in the middle as I can. So I'm grabbed it like that. 
I line my centers back up see it's all so it's all nice and centered. If you don't do it this way and you start from this this end over here and work your way down, you never get this lined up right. So you start on this side and then you work your way up. Now I gotta crimp those crimp beads. Now I can use the pliers like I did before, otherwise we do have a few of these um, crimp um, uh, crimping pliers. There is a hole, I don't know if you can see it or not. There is kind of a hole, there's like two spots you use it. There's kind of a, a larger one and then kind of a crimper one um, on there to get it tighter. So a lot of times you'll side this on and the first one doesn't work real well. So I kind of use, just use the very flat tip of it. And then I'm going to keep this, trying to keep this as tight as I can. Okay, and then because it's got that on there, I have a little bit of a um, play on there, which is fine. It doesn't have to be um, super tight. Unless you want it, then then you would, you wouldn't want to curl it as much as I had. Um, that's done. So the next thing, as I work on this side, is... I put the crimp bead on, put in our seed bead, three of those, seed bead, crimp bead, and work up. Remember, you don't have to do the, these if, you're, if your hole is small enough in your, your piece here. But this is how you start your project. Uh, you start getting this stuff on here, you kind of crimp those in place if you want to do it that way. If you have no intention of using these at all within your design, then you can just tape these if you want to, or, or you can grab another crimp just so you can hold it on so you don't have to tape it. Um, and that'll work too, okay? So you don't have to... Um, start in the middle if you have a design that, that doesn't that isn't suspending anything okay so we're gonna get it all finished up and I'm gonna do another day demonstration good luck on this part of the project again let me know if you have any questions thanks in this demonstration I'm gonna show you how to use the head pin I did find a eye pin right here remember the eye pin is um, is something where you could dangle something from the dangle uh, if you wanted to. So, so either way will work. I'm just going to kind of demonstrate on this one. Now you do need um, a round needle nose pair of pliers when you do this. Um, you should have one in your toolbox. Um, so you should be able to use that as well as your regular pliers. Um, you might have to borrow one of these from me. It's just a, um, a side cutter because um, we do need to cut that metal off at some point. So just real basic. I'm going to take this bead Stick it down in here and just first off, make sure that it doesn't, it doesn't come off. You know, if it did, use the same trick uh, we did before. You put like a jump or a seed bead in there instead, and you have this down. Now, we're going to make this have a loop on it. Um, and you usually want to keep the loop, you know, relatively small. You don't want it really big. So looking at this, notice that if I over here, because I'm going to be taking this and, and bending it, um, it's going to be a very large loop. You know, and in the front, it's going to be probably a little bit too small, but I want to go up just about, maybe about here when I do this. Now, you want to keep this as tight as you can, um, or I take it back. You don't need to keep this tight. It's just kind of whatever you want, okay? If you are planning on doing, you know, a series of these, like a, a long, you know, medium and short, you know, up a necklace, then you have to definitely work with that a little bit. And you could have more beads on here. I just have one just to show it, but you could have more on here, um, but you just can't, you just got to make sure you don't come out of, run out of room. So the first step is to bend this in half. So it should look like this. And then I'm gonna keep bending it until it goes all the way around and ends up being looking like, like this. Now, at this point, you wanna grab your other pair of pliers, okay? So I have my other pair of pliers right here and you can take this and you want to wrap it around the other string, or other, um, the rest of the head pin. Now you want to keep this as tight as you can. And every time you wrap it around, you want to see if you can stack it, you know, the one right next to it, like on top of it. Not, not directly on top, or below it, sorry. Um, you never want to be on top of it. And you want to try not to have a gap. Okay. So I'll just look at that for a second. So you can see that it's stacked nicely. Now I do want this lining up. Okay. 
and I want to grab this part right here. I'm not going to cut it off because we don't need to. But I want to get a hold of that and really make sure that it's flat against the rest of my piece there. And I think I might actually cut that. Okay. So you can see that it's still sticking out a little bit. You gotta, gotta get in there and you gotta close that up. See, now that's nice and tight. Now when I look at this for grading wise, what I'm looking at, I'll set this down, is I'm seeing how straight this is. So this is okay. You know, I did a decent job on this. This still needs to be bent up a little bit more because it should be right down, um, lined up underneath it. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, this is a little better. No, it's not. <laughs> Let me get this on here better. So I want to make sure it's centered. So that's better. So if I have that circle here, I go, I go straight down and I go right into the head pin. If I have the circle and it goes off to the side and then down, then it doesn't work. So now that's more, more of an A type of project. So you need to make these up ahead of time because then you're going to treat this like a bead because you're going to slide your, um, your strand. So if this is the end of my, my necklace here. I can slide that in where I want it. Um, so then it can dangle, dangle down. Okay. And that's, that's how I use a head pin. So good luck on that. And again, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Hello everybody. In this video, I am going to go over how to construct the lariette. Um, there's, there's lots of ways <laughs> like any, like anything else. Um, and so I'm going to demonstrate on a couple of them. Um, but you'll have to kind of figure out which one fits your project. Now, I do have a couple things here. Um, one, I have this um, toggle clasp that would work well. Um, I found this and this in our um, pendant um, container, so that would work. I have more loops kind of like this um, and some larger ones, and here is a really big. Um, so any of this stuff would work. Or you could just have a plain one, okay? In, in the sense that you don't use any of this and you just use this. So I'm gonna show that one first. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a crimp bead. I have that crimp bead on there. And I need to flip this end around and go back in there again. As I go through it, you can also try to go through as many of these beads as you can to kind of hide that tail. Okay, but this in essence is the part that you can drop something else through. So you just kind of figure out the sizes that you want. Um, and then I would go and I would crump that shut. Okay, so it's a matter of going through and then going through as many beads as you can. Um, if you didn't want to do it that way, any of these you could attach on, but it's the same way. Decide that I'm going to pull this through about three of them. So right, tails right here. Grab my pliers. And then pull that through nice and tight. So this loop here is a lot smaller than it was the first time. And I could even pull it even, even tighter. Now, in this case, this is, just make sure you don't have any beads that are bigger than this is, is that that'll drop in and there's, there's your layer yet. Okay, now with this, you just want to kind of pull these off a little bit 
and go through with a pair of scissors um, or even this and make sure you go and snap that off and then it just and try to tuck it back into one of those other beads again okay but this works with any of this stuff um, I'm gonna pull this out I'm gonna grab this big gold one. Same technique. Pass it back through that crimp bead. I'm gonna finish this one off. Crimp that nice and tight there. Crimp that off. And there you go, okay? So that's Lariat. Um, find something circular um, or anything that has a hole in it. You know, this this would not work. <laughs> I don't think anything would fit through that. Um, but like a washer would work. You know, there's this, there's this square thing um, that I found that might work depending on the size of beads you have. Um, so that'd be kind of fun. So whatever you wanna do, remember this could be in the front or the back, so. Okay, good luck in the project. Again, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Hello, everybody. In this demonstration, I wanna show you how to use chain. Now I have this container, usually has a red lid on it um, that you can kind of dump it out. And as we get stuff that's donated, you know, when it comes to jewelry, I usually try to strip it down into um, whatever whatever the base, base is, you know, whether it's chain, whether it's, uh, beads that I want to keep, whether whatever whatever I can find, um, is what we kind of go for. Um, so, so on this, you can kind of start finding ones that you like. Now, there are beads that are attached to some of these, and and some of these you might want to actually use for your project. You know, so so like I like this uh, black Dalmatian um, kind of design right here that I might end up using. And if I wanted it, I could just look at the other end over here and be able to kind of just use my pliers and peel that off and I got I got one of my beads, you know, that I want to use. So find some chain in here that you would like. Um, and then we also have to make sure that whatever we use, our wire can still pass through it, okay? So, and some chain won't ever work. Like this chain right here will not work. There is no holes in this at all. So, so I would end up just basically tossing anything like that. I don't even know how, why those are even in there. So, I'm gonna grab these two chains right here. And I'm also gonna grab some wire. Um, so we have wire in different kind of containers. Um, this one's still on its spool. Um, this is a 20, sorry about that. Um, this is our wire right here. Um, this is still in its spool. We are, um, we usually have a, another system kind of set up that I'm working on, so maybe it's done by then. But this is 20 gauge. I would, I wouldn't go much, thicker than 20 gauge. 22 would be probably be a little bit better, a little bit easier. Um, and so the larger the number, um, the thinner uh, this wire actually gets. So I'm gonna take more than I need because um, I wanna actually also wrap a bead here. So I'm gonna take this, this is uh, maybe about six inches. And like anything else, there's probably other ways of doing this. This is just the way that I, I know. So I'm gonna take this wire, I'm gonna pass this bead through there, okay? and I want to create a loop. So I'm gonna take my round needle nose pliers again. So I have it just like this, just like our head pin. And because this tail is long enough, I can actually use my hands this time to wrap that around. You know, I just have it wrapped around twice. And then I can snip the end off here. And then take my pliers again. Just go around that a little bit. So I have this bead that I wanna go from bead to bead for my demonstration uh, part. I have that first part done. Second part, same thing. I'm gonna grab this end right here. This time I do wanna keep this tight. So I wanna go right up to the bead um, like this and take this long end wrap that around just once 
That's probably tight enough right there. Take those side cutters. Cut that excess off. Take my regular pliers here. And I want to tuck that down a little bit. Now it's still kind of awkward in a way that's lined up. So I want to just bend this until it's kind of straight again. You have two pairs of pliers you can use to really get this straight. Okay, so there's there's a bead. You know, I had a student make like 20 of these one time for their necklace, and obviously they got really good at it um, as, as they kept working with this. So normally, you know, you'd have one of these and then a chain, then another one of those and then a chain, um, but I wanna kind of show you how to add, add this on. Because right now you don't have an opening. Um, so in order for you to use this chain, if I really wanted to use this kind right here, I'd almost have to use a jump ring. Um, and the jump rings are, and here. So I have jump rings, uh, this one says gold. Um, I'm using, I guess I can switch this over. I'm using silver wire, of which I should say with silver chain and silver, but just for demonstration, I'm gonna grab this. Now, I'm gonna kind of dump these out. Usually I buy a variety pack because everybody's gonna be a little different. And I think I'd wanna use this small one. So I'm gonna open this up, put it in my chain, and then also put it here and then close it back up again. I don't know if I can do this um, and for you to see at the same time, but I will try Get this pliers here. So use a um, finger to open that up. So I just went through the chain, dropping, dropping that. <laughs> open this up a little bit more. Close that, and then I'm gonna close this back up. So now I have a chain for this. Now, the way you cut the chain is you can actually use a pair of scissors for most of them. Not all of them, but for most of them. But now I have the chain to a bead, and I would do the same thing this side, put a jump ring on and then a chain. And then you can kind of space those out. Okay, so that's so that's on your packet. Um, <clears throat> what's the dad chain that says uh, bead, 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 to, bead to the end. Um, now you can also use a head pin and attach this uh, attach this onto because this also talks about like a tail. So I can take my head pin. I got it right here. Now if I don't want to use a if I don't want to use if I don't want to use a jump ring, I need to <clears throat> put the chain on right away. Okay, there's a little bit of risk on that because you're kind of pinching the metal together a little bit. So I'm gonna do this again, and this all the way around. Now before I start wrapping it, I'm gonna take the end of this chain, make sure it's in there. I can hold this. I went around two, two or three times. Get in here. Kind of pinch that tail back down. And now I have a tail um, that's kind of at the end. And just like in my other one, you don't want, this would not be a, as good of a grade. It would not be necessarily an, an A. So I'm going to take this and bend this. So again, that it's more of a 90. So it just drops right down into it. Okay, so that works. So this could dangle, dangle down somewhere if you wanted to. Okay. Good. So that's kind of the tail. And, and there are other ways. Um, but this is kind of the one way that I can show you. Okay. Um, again, um, lots of varieties. You might you might want to bring your own um, chain if you have something that I want to talk about. Um, is that you grab this other end over here 
If you have this and you want to go to a chain, this is what I would do. Grab a crimping. I have a crimp bead there. And then I want to go to my chain right away. And then same thing, pass that back through there. Pull this nice and tight. You know, if you have some beads, slide that underneath the beads. If you don't, crimp it, and then just cut off as close as you can get. There, and that's nice and strong. Okay, so that's another that's another way of doing that. Earrings. Remember, we have two different styles. Um, this is our shepherd's hook. And it might have another name. Um, that's just what I have seen them called. I'll just use one. We have them both in gold and silver. So again, if you're using silver for your wire, use silver for everything else. You know, and here is an ear wire. Um, so, and I do have, I believe I do have the stoppers for these if you wanna use, actually use them. Um, sometimes if you've got really sensitive skin, you know, you do want to use a much higher quality, like either like a sterling silver, um, or a surgical steel. Um, and you won't have to worry about that nearly as, as much in terms of irritating your, 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 your uh, your earlobe. Now I'm going to use this one. So I did this one for a demonstration already, and this will be fine. Um, I'm going to attach it onto there. The way you attach it is you're going to be taking this one. Um, this one will just slide right inside that little hole there, but I want to look at this and I want to very carefully just open up open that up so hopefully you can see that it's now opened up I can take this slide that in place take my pliers and let's close that back up again and then you're done. So it's, it's really simple. Um, a lot of people get into making jewelry because they realize, you know what? It's, it's not that complicated. <laughs> you know, the big thing is, is like, you know, our, our beads aren't super expensive. Um, you can you can put a lot of money into into beads and stuff like that. Um, and then you can start making your own own jewelry. So, so there you go. Um, and again, if I wanna make more, I can. I could add a whole bunch of chain pieces in there. You know, it was another idea, um, but that's, that's your demonstration for um, earrings. Thank you. Okay, now that you have your project all done, regardless if you have one strand in this hand or you have three because you did multiple necklaces, you do this. You do, you do this for both different techniques. So I have a bead tip, I have a crimp bead, and then I have a finding, and I have the other finding on the other side. Um, so remember, the toggle has has that bar across it. So same thing like you did in your last project is you're going to take this crimp bead, pass that through there. I'm going to take the seed bead. Now this time, remember you don't need a ton of room because you're not going to tie it. So if you want this all the way up top here, you're, you're more than welcome to get it as high as you want it to. Okay, um, take your pliers. I crimp this shut. Now I want to cut this now because it'll be easier than doing it after it's on. Sliding this up. Remember, we just close this up. If you need to use your pliers, you can. This gets a little tricky sometimes because the the crimp that's in there sometimes is isn't setting in there right, and it's not allowing you to shut it. Um, so you want to kind of make sure that's kind of flat. I think I should just be able to close this with my fingernails, one of my fingers. But I'm gonna use my pliers. Okay, so that's together nice and nice and good. Slide this in. 
Again, you do not want to crush this. You just want to close that up just like that, and then you're fine. Pull that nice, nice and good a few times, make sure it's attached, um, and then you do the exact same thing on their side, and then you're done. Thank you.